Welcome back, class. I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide. Um, last time we left off on section 5, number 5, so let's get started on number 6. And this is my attempt at drawing whatever was drawn in the book. Really, this is how it looks. This is supposed to be a truck, and that orange line is supposed to be, I don't know what that's called, a ramp. My god, I don't know what a ramp is. But anyways, so the problem is a ramp is extended from the truck to the ground as shown in the figure over here. And figure not to scale, always remember that. Figure not to scale. No figures are ever going to be to scale in the SAT, even if it doesn't say so. Don't trust them and their advice that says that only if it's written not to scale. But either way, the ramp has a slope of 716, which I wrote down over here. And y is 3.5 feet. So what is x? Um, to figure this out, we're going to have to use proportions. So since the slope of the orange line is 716, if you notice a relationship, you can make this 716, this is equal to y, and this is equal to x. In some instance, that will be true. So 716, you can say, equals to 3.5, the y value, over x, which we don't know yet. So setting up this proportion, you will notice that 3.5 is just half of 7. So we know that x is also going to be half of 16, because a proportion always has the same proportions. That's why it's a proportion. So half of 16, which is 16 divided by 2, so it's equal to 8, and that's answer number A. So now we will move on to number 7. And, ba -ba -ba. and just a notice before we start the problem, I might put up a video on Thanksgiving as the Thanksgiving spirit, but either way. Alright, recording cut off there. Anyways, number seven, there's a par parabola. Parabola. We're gonna draw that. With the y-axis over here, x-axis over here. That's a crooked x-axis, which isn't supposed to happen. And this is what the parabola looks like. Got so many pronunciation mistakes in one sentence. The graph above is a par para uh, parabola whose equation is y equals ax squared plus 2, where a is a constant. If y equals a over 3x squared plus 2 is graphed on the same axes, which of the following best describes the resulting graph as compared with the graph above? So we need to set out some rules on the curved graphs here. I'm not going to say the word again because I can't pronounce it for some reason. So, we're going to break apart the entire equation. Let's just start with the first one because it doesn't have fancy fractions. That's going to be towards the end of the explanation. y equals ax squared plus 2. Now, a, the a value here, determines how whether the parabola is wide or if it's skinny. And the square just indicates that it's a curved line. If it wasn't a square, if it was just AX, it would be a straight line. And the 2 here, this is where the vertex of the par parabola is. And if you don't know, the vertex is the lowermost or highermost, depending on which shape. It, lowermost if the parabola is open downwards, this will be the vertex. If it, it's, it's open downwards, that was opened upwards, I said downwards. If it's open downwards, it will the vertex will be over here. So just the middle midpoint of the curve, this major curve in the entire thing. So now we know that the graph's lowest point here is a y value of two. That's going to be the y value. I forgot to say that. Now moving on to this a. So how do we change whether it's wider or skinnier? Well. If the graph were instead y equals 3ax squared plus 2, when you multiply a number with a, hence if you make it bigger, the graph is going to look skinnier. 
like that. And if you instead divide it, hence make it smaller, the lines, the graph is going to look like that. Now, it's a little bit confusing, however, I'm not going to go too in-depth as I will be making a video on co the coordinate plane as it's a very confusing subject among many. We will explain every single little bit of it and break it up, but I either way, so when you divide or make the A value smaller, the graph gets bigger. If you multiply and or hence make it bigger, the graph go becomes smaller. So, since we are dividing it, the answer choice that will only meet its requirements is B, which means it will be wider, which is exactly what we have stated the entire problem. So, now we're going to move on to number 8, which is the final question in the multiple choice on this section. So, Meredith has a red hat, a blue hat, and a white hat. She also has three sweaters, one red, one blue, and one white, and three pairs of jeans, one red, one blue, and one guess what. So, apparently Meredith is a big American patriot. Nothing saying bad against it. I'm, I live in the same place. Anyways, Meredith wants to wear a red, white, and blue outfit consisting of one hat, one sweater, and one pair of jeans. So, how many different possibilities does she have? So, what you're going to have to use here is the counting principle. The counting principle simply goes like this. Let's pick out these. Let, let's even color it the way she wants it. Red, blue and white. Luckily I still have white on my color palette. Uh, so before she even has any of these colored clothes how many possibilities does she have for the red part of her dress? Well she can either wear a red hat, she can wear a red sweater, or she can wear red jeans. So there are three possibilities there. Hence three red possibilities but we're not done yet. Now we go to the blue. What are the possibilities here? Well, now let's go back to the red part of it. If you pick the hat here, then the only possibilities are a sweater or a jeans. However, if you picked sweater, then sweater would be cut off and it would be jeans and a hat. And if you cut off if you pick jeans here, then you would cut off jeans here and bring back sweater again. So Either way, there are only two possibilities in this empty spot, so we're going to write that down as well. Now, on her white part, if you pick the hat, a red hat, a red sweater, then she can only wear a jean. So you see where I'm going with this, right? Whatever she picks, the only chances will, each chance of each one will just decrease by one, if you get what I mean by that. Well, since there are only so many possibilities, each time you pick one, you can't pick the uh, the same one again, so you're just decreasing it, and you can't repick it no matter what. So this is called the counting principle, I believe. So there's only one possibility over here. That's the wrong color I used. There's only one possibility over here. So now what you have to do is you multiply every single one of these. And what do you get? You get the grand total of six. So 6 is our answer. And if you didn't understand the way I did that, we can just do it entirely a different way. Like, let's set up a table. Um, there we go. So H for hat, S for sweater, and J for jeans. So if she picks a red hat, she can have a blue sweater, and she can have white jeans. Now, if she had still a red hat, she can have white sweater and a blue jean. It's blue jeans, it's never a jean. Now, let's make it bigger with a different color. Now, that's all the possibilities for a hat. Now, if we change the red to a sweater, what happens then? Now, this is red. When that is red, I actually wrote H and J. That's supposed to be R and white, but either way, no, that's supposed to be blue. 
Either way, instead of distracting myself, she can have a blue hat and white jeans once again. If she still wants to pick a red sweater, she can also have a white hat and blue jeans. So we're getting repetitive here. So, But you know what the next step is going to be? There are two possibilities where her jeans are white. Red. I'm, I apologize. No. Yes, red. So her sweater can be white or her hat can be white and vice versa the sweater can be blue the hat can be blue as well so there's two four six possibilities so that is the correct answer either way it's still six so we're not gonna stop here but uh... We're, yeah we're just gonna keep moving on here so Let's go to number nine. You feel free to pause the video if you want to stop at multiple choice for now and watch the student response a bit later. But anyways, number nine is when twice a certain number is increased by five, and the result is fourteen. What is the number? Well, let's translate this into an equation. So twice a certain number when it says a certain number pick any variable you want even pi but don't use the 3.14 in your cal calculations yeah, don't even use pi let's just use x so 2x when it's increased by 5 then the result is 14 so 2x plus 5 is equal to 14 so what is the number so what is x this is just an equation it should be fairly easy so what you do is subscribe the uh, subscribe <laughs> I'm so stuck with subscribers anyways you subtract the 5 from both sides so 2x plus 5 minus 5 is equal to 14 minus 5 the plus 5 and minus 5 cross off here 2x is equal to 14 minus 5 which is 9 and x is equal to 4.5 and that is the correct answer so now we'll go to number 10 which says oh, there's actually a drawing first rejected uh, transversal no that's just horrible I need to draw a bit better there we go and this is y degrees this is x degrees now it says in the figure above L is oh I forgot to label it alright now, in the figure above, line L is parallel to line M, so this thingy, and Y is equal to 3X. What is the value of Y? Well, if Y is equal to 3X, let's just change it to 3X degrees. So, the 3X and X are same side interior angles. They're inside the parallel lines and they're on one side of the transversal so in these type of angles when you add them together they're gonna equal 180 degrees they're supplementary angles so from that now you can just say x plus 3x is equal to 180 4x is equal to 180 and x is equal to 180 divided by 4 which should be 45 and so we need to figure out what y is y is equal to 3x so 3x is gonna equal to 45 times 3 that's 15 one on the other side 12 13 so the answer is 135 and uh, I don't wanna hurry rush the entire video so I'm gonna stop right there and because the next video does have a drawing a little bit of a better drawing than the truck I must say so anyways thank you for watching I hope this helped you with your SAT preparation and as usual I will see you in the next video